Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Chris, and this is Regular Guy Training. So, I got one of my clown shoes, this fuck-looking targets, uh, over here. And, um, I figured that I would talk to you guys about this little thing. Um, I'm, uh, I'm gonna preface this by saying I am absolutely not the first person to, uh, to use this. I'm not the first person to talk about it. I'm not the first person to approach a forum of any kind and, and push it out there. This is actually a fairly old technique, um, for zeroing a rifle or getting in the neighborhood, as it were. Um, so I don't know what the title of this video is going to be just yet, but when it's out there, it's out there. Now, here's the thing, right? During my last Rifle 1 and 2 class out in uh, Louisiana, uh, the barrel in my M16 carbine and in my 20-inch rifle both went down. Um, after doing a little bit of math and looking at a bunch of receipts that I dedicated toward that rifle, the 20-inch gun, um, its barrel went down and started keyholing at about 14,000 rounds. And the M16 carbine, which was which was um, created about a year after that, uh, went down in, mu in a much shorter amount of time. I don't have an exact round count on that guy because I wasn't um, tracking it in that sense. Um, it was one of those things that gets turned loose all the time uh, during our Rifle 1 and 2 classes for guys that need um, uh, either guns with iron sights or if their rifle breaks or something like that. So what you're seeing right here is uh, an M forgery of j uh, just assembled via amalgamation of parts and that kind of stuff, and none of this shit zeroed to it, right? So, um, what's kind of funny? What's kind of funny about this is that once you take optics and friggin' sighting systems from different rifles and that kind of stuff, and decide to go and zero it, if you start from uh, where you intend to zero it, you could actually be in for kind of sort of a bad time, depending on how far off these guys are. You know, especially if, for instance, you have different 5.56 rifles that you're changing things to. Like, for instance, um, a SCAR, for instance. If you zero optics and, and whatnot to that gun and then try that on you know, pick an AR type of some kind. I've personally seen those sights be like way off, right? And it just, it, it just depends on how it mounts up to the rail or anything. It's nothing, it's not like a downer on the uh, quality of the rifles or that kind of deal. It's just, if you start trading equipment from one gun to the other, it's just, it just depends on how that upper sit, how it melts with that lower, that kind of thing. It could be pretty off, right? So here's a method of getting a, in the neighborhood type deal. Uh, I can't even really say zero. Now, here's the thing. With this particular method, what you're going after is, is your point of impact at three yards centered up with your height over bore, right? So what you're doing is that you're holding at the dead center of an object. Like for instance, that target over there is a USPSA target and the brain box area that you can see a little T in is a letter A. Right? That would be in the center of that black box that's over there. Now, I'm going to go after the irons on this first because I typically zero my irons first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line these up, you know, friggin' uh, top edge of the front side post in the center, meaning the center of the peep side or the circle. And I'm going to hold it at the very center of that dot, like in that A. Right? And I'm going to press the trigger on the rifle. Now, if I have a, if I have a vertical uh, offset of 2.6 inches, right? My roundabout elevation is fairly close. And if it's centered up, meaning it's not way off left or right or that kind of thing, um, again, it's fairly close to your, your windage, right? Now, again, this isn't a friggin' zero. This is a way to speed things up. So you're not putting a six shot group into the target only for it to be like way the fuck over there and in some cases off the paper entirely. And then you're sitting there shooting dirt and that kind of thing trying to figure out exactly how off you are. Um, I've used steel plates before to try and speed things up and this just happens to work. And then after I get a roundabout uh, guesstimation of where the irons are, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the optic and I'm going to go ahead and take another shot and see exactly how off that is. Now, the Aimpoint Comp M4 with this particular mount has a... Um, has about a uh, absolute co-witness. So again, I'm looking around about 2.6 inches from the point of aim. I'll have a low impact. So there is that um, 
as far as what I'm looking for. Now, if you're one-third um, co-witnesses and that kind of stuff, it's just a little bit more. Now, as far as measurement is concerned, you can absolutely go ahead and use a, a ruler or that kind of thing. I use my individual digits at, for a roundabout measurement because, for instance, the width of one of your fingers, right, or rather the height looking at it here, is about half an inch, right, because you'll have two and that's about an inch. Most people have like a roundabout uh, measurement as the length of their thumb equals an inch. So the length of your thumb, right, that would be round about your inch right there and half of it is half that inch make sense so again it's not exact it's a roundabout kind of deal just so that you know for a fact you'll be on paper sort of kind of close so that way you don't have to worry about you know out the gate the thing the the optics or irons that you're mounting on your rifle being like way the fuck off and then you're sitting there making expensive noise trying to figure out how to pull your shots on the paper and then over to where to what exactly you want to shoot so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and step off for, from about three yards. I'm going to fire a shot. Uh, and by the way, it's not a group. It's a shot, a really well-placed shot, which I'm pretty sure the vast majority of people can do at three yards, uh, with a rifle especially, so that you're not giving yourself a false equivalency of some kind. One well-placed shot at a time. And if you're really off left, right, up, or down, then you can go ahead and make adjustments. So again... No holdover tricks, no nothing. You're just lining up your sights, top edge of the front sight post, in the center of the peak, holding dead center of what it is that you intend to shoot. And after you fire that shot, where you want to be is about uh, 2.6 inches low of your, point of, of your point of aim, and your windage fairly centered up. So let's kind of go from there. I'm at about three yards right here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press a shot. Now let's go take a look at this really quick. Now, what we're looking at here is exactly what we've got, right? I'm centering it up in the center of that A, and the impact zone, and the impact is, if we line all those up, round about sort of kind of two point, you know, two point six inches. Again, it's not exact, but at the same time, okay, cool. I know I'm roughly in the neighborhood of what it is that I intend to shoot here, right? Now that I'm in the neighborhood of this, and so that I know I'll at the very least be on paper for where, for what it is that I'm shooting at when I back up, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my optic now and see what the case is, and see what the case may be for that. And the cool thing is, is that this helps you make extreme changes uh, to your sights without wasting a shitload of time, okay? I know I'm in the neighborhood and I'll be on paper when I go back as far as my iron sights immediately. So now let's see if the, if the same can be said about the optic. Now let's look at it. This guy is a little bit lower. Now it's not crazy low by just looking at it, but up here that could that's actually, you know, a few clicks to bring it up about to where about, you know, it is that I want it. But I know for a fact that based on my point of aim and then my point of impact, again, I want about roughly 2.6 inches, right? So, if I press that shot back there, okay, and it, it, it depends on what type of zero you're using. Generally speaking, I use a 50 uh, yard zero that I confirm at 200. This particular rifle, I'm going to be doing a 36, uh, just because I have another uh, video coming up after this about what zero is best for you, and, you know, it is what it is. But the left to right is mostly centered, right? However, I know that if I go back to 36, I'm going to be a touch low. So the cool thing is, is that right here, 
I can pull it up a few clicks, take another shot, and pretty much put it to the base of that little T-zone, that little tiny T-zone in there. And once I'm in the base of that, I know I'm roughly in the neighborhood of what it is that I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and make the adjustments here, and I'm going to go ahead and place another shot. All right, so I made a couple adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and, and square up with the target here, and then I'm going to place another shot, see what's what. Still have some adjustments to make, which is okay. Again, this close, it could be cranked up quite a bit. And there we go. Real simple, okay, really simple as far as just what is going to be what. Let's go ahead and look at what there is to look at. Okay, and that second shot is in that little T-zone where, where I wanted it to be, right? No big deal. So now, as sort of a proof of concept type thing, I'm going to go ahead and back up. To about 36 and once I'm at 36 I'm not going to make any alterations to the zero whatsoever what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up over there I'm going to take a small shot group of three on each uh, available target here and then we'll see roundabout what the uh, what the uh, impacts look like and these should be in the neighborhood requiring requiring obviously to, you to zero the freaking rifle but it won't be super duper off so let's go check it out all right, so clearly this motherfucker needs to get mowed, right? But while we're in the weeds here, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and do what it is that I said I was gonna do. Um, I'm gonna take shot group at a couple of dots on that target, and like I said, it's not gonna be like horribly off the paper. It's not gonna be friggin' zeroed either. It's one of those things that helps you out as far as speeding up your little process, especially when you rotate equipment from rifle to rifle or whatever, right? Especially for you build guys. So, also, please be patient with me. I've been on the right-handed only sauce for a little while now. It takes me a little bit longer to, uh, to line up an accurate shot. So, stay patient, and we'll do what we got to do. Just got to snake my way into some controls here. Let's turn this optic off first. Okay, rotate myself to another dot, or to another dot, using my optic here.
let's go look at what's what. Those of you that don't know, I've been on a right-handed only kick for a little while. And, you know, some guys are going to go ahead and ask, oh, well, what, what gives? Why would you do that? That kind of thing. Well, I'm bad at shooting right-handed. I've been left-handed for 21 years, right, because I started shooting when I was six. Okay? And sometimes there are little moments of greatness, and sometimes you suck real hard, but that's part of development anyway. For instance, right, this left-handed dot with the irons and right-handed was pretty shit. Right? I had that one get way away from me. I felt like it was a miss before I left the friggin' gun. That was my second shot. And then, you have little moments of greatness, like this super tight shot group over here. And you can see how they are a little bit off. Right? Both of which, both of which are a little bit high. Okay, no big deal. One off to the left slightly, one off to the right slightly. But the thing is, is like I said, this isn't to get you zeroed off the bat. It's to get you in the neighborhood fairly close so you can start dialing things in. So, let me know what you guys think in the comments and that kind of stuff. And remember, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Easy.